What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and if you're a photographer currently using Adobe Lightroom or a photographer who wishes to maybe be using Lightroom but doesn't because it's either too expensive or too limited, stand by because today's video is made just for you. We have found what we believe could be an alternative to Adobe Lightroom that claims to be more powerful and is definitely less expensive. So without further ado, let's just kick off today's video. We have actually found what we believe could be an Adobe Lightroom alternative and the best part about it is you don't have to pay for it every single month. On the Luminar side, it has a one-time $60 fee. You don't have to pay every single month, whereas with Lightroom, every single month on your credit card statement is either $15 or $50, depending on the package you have, just to be using the Adobe suite of products. You could see how these charges could start to add up. Now, price alone is not the only reason that the community has been looking for this Lightroom alternative. Also, photographers at a higher level find themselves constantly switching between Lightroom and Photoshop to be able to get all of the desired effects that they need for their work. But this new alternative called Luminar 2018 has something called non-destructive editing that you'll find in Photoshop. As I'm opening up this program, I've pulled a couple photos for us to edit and test today. I wanted to address something I've seen a ton in the comments and it's how to make an intro for your channel like the one I have or similar. Well, the secret to my intro is I actually didn't create it myself. Now, I didn't hire someone else to create it, but I used something called an After Effects template. Now, basically all that means is someone else made the motion and I went in and plugged in my own photos and wrote the text that made sense for my channel. And it dawned on me that a lot of people who watch these videos might not even know what an After Effects template is. There's tons of places online you can find these templates, but the one that I use is actually a sponsor of this video, Storyblocks.com. Storyblocks.com is a great place for B-roll stock footage, motion backgrounds, and yes, After Effects templates. Storyblocks is also really good about adding new content all the time, so I'll just put their links down in the description. If you're in the market for After Effects templates or B-roll footage, just go check them out, see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. So, as Luminar is opening, well, right off the bat, the first place that Luminar is going to be different than Lightroom is unfortunately, it does not have a library view. Now, a lot of you guys that use Lightroom all the time know, all of your photos are kept in the library. So you can go back, you can find them at a later date, you can flip through them quickly, you can edit different photos. Unfortunately, Luminar has this ability coming, they've told me, but right now they don't. So you're gonna have to click open image, you're gonna have to go find your photo, double click it, and unfortunately only that image is going to open. But that won't hold us back because over here on the right looks a lot like Lightroom. We have all of these different settings, all these different places where we can start to edit and affect our image. But before we get into those, I wanna show you the biggest difference between Lightroom and Luminar, which comes down to the destructive versus non-destructive photo editing. Now, as you know, in Lightroom, it is destructive. There's no layer-based editing. You are just constantly changing the image and there's no way to go through and individually delete the face or the eyes. So looking at the Luminar homepage, up here in the top right, you see layers. So if we click plus, we can add a new adjustment layer. So this file right here is our actual image. We have added an adjustment layer on top of it. We can go in here and choose what we want that adjustment layer to be. And there's just so many options, it's ridiculous. There's even something like sun rays you can move the sun rays to the side and it actually changes the light rays depending on what part of your image they're coming through, which is pretty next level. I haven't even seen anything like that in Photoshop. But what's really special about this non-destructive photo editing is you can add another layer that'll go on top of the sun rays. You can actually name the layers what you want. You could go in and grab the fog and then turn on fog and you'll know that this layer which I've accidentally named ROG, is FOG. Now, I've done a good bit of research on this program online to try to find 
what features Luminar has that Lightroom does not so that we could focus this video on that rather than just showing you everything it can do. One of the big places that Luminar shines is something called artificial intelligence editing, which is this Accent AI filter. Now, I for one am someone who would not like this feature. I like doing everything myself, but let's see what it can do and why people like it. Okay. That's actually very interesting. It just really balanced the photo quite nicely and brought everything about where it should have come out of camera. So I could add an adjustment layer like I just did and then I could choose that layer to be this artificial filter, turn that way up and then just start on a new layer and it's like it came out of my camera a little better. That is a very interesting feature. Now something that's quite cool about this style of editing is we can go in, select just this one AI filter layer and we can either choose a brush and paint it in where we want it. Looks like we can choose a gradient mask or a radial mask, which is pretty cool. Okay, for the next test, I'm gonna bring in a different image, something with green, and then let's check out this new filter they have called a foliage filter. It enhances the colors of foliage and greenery automatically, making them more vivid and natural. So as I slide this, you can see the greens in the trees change dramatically, and then I can actually go down here and change what color they're changing to, the hue. I can make them a rich green or a yellow. In Lightroom, you can do similar things, but you have to know how to do them first. The difference between Luminar and Lightroom seems to be that in Luminar, they name things. This, this app is actually starting to look like something that would be very, very beneficial to someone trying to learn Lightroom because instead of having to figure things out on your own, they kind of tell you what they do here and allow you to just select it and get the job done. It looks like there's even Golden Hour. If I click Golden Hour, what does that do? Wow, look at that. If I select golden hour, it just adds warmth to my image, which I would typically have to do in the white balance in Lightroom, but they don't make you know it. They just have a filter called golden hour and you can choose how golden you want it to be. Split color warmth. This is something that I've never seen in a, a photo editor. So if you notice, when I mess with cool, only the blue lights in the back are changing. And then when I mess with the warm, only the orange lights in the front are changing. That is very cool. I'm trying to be skeptical about this program because Lightroom is honestly a near perfect program other than having to switch between Lightroom and Photoshop and the fact that Lightroom costs money every single month. But it has some tools that could definitely make you stand out against people who are editing only in Lightroom. So we are going to add a layer because we don't ever need to destroy the photo that we're editing with. That photo can always stay the same and we can add all of our color and adjustment layers on top of it. And then we can go down and try this thing called top and bottom lighting, which I think is awesome. So I say, we can bring up the brightness in the rocks down here and then up top where it's a little too bright we can darken down without actually making the whole image darker this is something that you can do in lightroom but you'd have to do it manually by creating masks and making darker making lighter this is one button and i'm very impressed by this but i can go here to color toning and then i can choose the color for the top which i'll choose as this orange and then I can choose the color for the bottom, which I can go for more of an aqua blue. And look at that. Okay, so now just because you'll probably wanna know, these are all the filters that Luminar claims to have in their filter catalog. There's the Accent AI artificial intelligence filter. Then we have a black and white conversion, which is just what you'd expect. There's saturation and vibrance, structure, tone, vignette. These are all very standard, typical things to find in photo editors. Clarity, dehaze, denoise, detail enhancer. Those are all things that Lightroom has. It starts getting a little different with foliage enhancer, which enhances just the greens and the bushes in your image. A polarizing filter, which acts similar to a polarizer on your lens, making the blues deeper and taking reflections out of the image. So tools like remove color cast sharpening, brilliance, warmth, cross-processing, dramatic, these are all things we have in Lightroom. They might have different names, but the ability is still there. But in Luminar, we are seeing fog, golden hour, high key, hue shift, 
image radiance, a matte look, Orton effect, soft focus, soft glow, and sun rays that we do not have in Lightroom. These are completely new tools that Luminar has given us. Now things like matte look, which is giving your photos that flat Instagram or Visco feel. You can do this effect in Lightroom, but the thing is, is you have to know how. You have to know in your curve, in the S curve, editing tool how to cut the blacks out so that it gives you this look the features go on and on with things like microstructure photo filters LUTs dodging and burning honestly Luminar has so many tools that they give you they don't make you find them or already know how to use them they're literally just easy to click buttons that give you the effects that you're probably already looking for. And because of all this, I don't really need to test this much more to already come up with exactly my standpoint on where this falls. If it's a Lightroom alternative, if it beats Lightroom, if it's worse than Lightroom. Basically, if you're editing in Lightroom without ever using Photoshop at all, you would probably enjoy Luminar more because you are going to gain more features and have more ability to do more with your photographs. Now, if you are a Photoshop whiz, you are going to hate Luminar because you already know how to do everything Luminar can do on your own. Photoshop is such a hard program to learn, but has so much functionality that if you've already learned Photoshop and you do not mind spending the little bit of money every single month, stay in Photoshop and Lightroom, you would be miserable in Luminar, to be honest. So if you edit in Lightroom and you're tired of spending money every month and you don't know how to use Photoshop, switch to Luminar. Now for myself, I actually edit a ton of my stuff in both Lightroom and Photoshop, and I'm pretty decent at both, so I will not be switching to Luminar except for very rare occurrences. But if you do not want to be spending the money every single month, if you're not currently using Lightroom, I would tell you Luminar is 100% going to work as a Lightroom alternative. But if you are currently not using Lightroom and you're just editing on your phone and you're looking for a desktop replacement for Adobe Lightroom, Luminar is your go-to. I will put the link down below and I highly recommend you check them out. But with that, the video is over. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. And feel free to subscribe for a brand new film and photography related video every single Thursday and Sunday, except for when life gets in the way. But as always, I love you guys very much. And before you go, remember, stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Peace.